Welcome to another TV Box Review. On today's video, I have the long-awaited review of the original A95XF2 TV Box, running on the Amlogic S905X2 CPU on Android 9 Pi operating system. This is the original model rebranded by other sellers, and we will see if the original model is any better than the others. Stay tuned, a full review is up next. So I'm back, and here is the box that it's shipped in. To the back you have some specifications. It shows that the model is the A95XF2. The CPU is the M-Logic Quad-Core Cortex-A53. The GPU is the Quad-Core G31. It has 4GB of RAM, 32GB of internal storage, and dual-band 2.4 plus 5GHz Wi-Fi. And that's all the information on the box, so I will now do a quick unboxing. So in the box you have the usual stuff. You get the A95XF2 TV box itself. You get this infrared remote. It's a standard remote and it may come in handy especially if the box has features on the launcher only the remote can navigate, but as an advanced user, you may want to consider using a wireless air mouse like this new LG Star G30 model. See the link in the description area. You get one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps power adapter, and a user's manual. Let's take a look at its design and what ports we have on this box. The body is made of plastic, with the F2 logo printed to the top. To the rear of the box, you have one HDMI port one Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, one audio video port, and a DC power input jack. To one side, you have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0, and a microSD card reader. It's blank to the other side. To the front, you have an LED clock display. And below the box, you have some ventilation holes. I will now set this up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So I'm set and ready to go. As I boot up for the first time, I am greeted by this stunning motion video featuring the F2 logo animation for a few seconds. Then I'm taken directly to the launcher. So this is the launcher running on Android 9 Pi operating system, and it's the same launcher from my video of the Vankio model, that features horizontal scrolling panels with the ability to rearrange the app shortcuts by long pressing on the OK button on one of the apps, and using the direction keys to reposition the shortcut to where you want, which is a nice feature. It also features the same custom shortcuts bar to the top where you can add shortcuts by clicking on the add button. You also have the option to rearrange the shortcuts the same as you have in the apps section. The one click memory cleanup button is also available for killing apps running in the background and freeing up system resources. At first the launcher didn't have a navigation bar and status bar, which was quite troubling because I knew the other two boxes came with them. However, I checked with the system updates and found that there was one update pending. Once completed, the launcher had both bars, but as in the other launchers the one to the top is not a full status bar with system controls, it's more of a notification bar. In the settings area under advanced settings you have the following options. 4K resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz. Dolby Vision Settings Audio Settings, with the option to select the audio output medium. You have a root access switch. You have picture mode options. 
and HDMI CEC control options. In the device preference area you have your standard system options, and an additional option to select an array of advanced Dolby Audio options including Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio settings. I will be doing an actual Dolby Atmos test and other audio formats later in the video. In the apps section, they have included a combination of system and media apps, casting apps, and streaming apps. These include the Google Play Store, YouTube, two set of file browsers, App Installer, Movie Player, Cast Play for TV, Amazon Prime Video, the Cetus Play app, the Airscreen app, Mobdro, Netflix, Kodi Add-ons Installer, the TV Apps Store, and TV MC which is a custom Kodi build. I will now install some additional apps needed to complete my review. So I've installed all my apps and to begin testing this box I will first try an alternative launcher and see if it works. I installed the ADW Launcher 2 and it works ok with all features like drag and drop shortcuts and long press pop-up menus working. I will now check to see if screen rotation works on this box. The results are the same as in the other models. Screen rotation does not work on this launcher. I will now check the root access information. It shows that the box is currently rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. Just be mindful that in the settings area you have a root switch, so there's no need to interfere with the super user app because it will put the box into a permanent boot loop that can only be fixed by flashing with a stock or updated firmware. And now look at its DRM information. It shows that it has Google Widevine Level 3 and no HDCP protection. This means that Netflix and Amazon Prime Video will only show in standard 480p quality. Let's look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Droid Logic, and the model is the A95XF2. It comes with 4GB of DDR4 RAM, and 32GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder. The Bluetooth version is 4.1, indicated by the 4 Plus, and I will connect a device to this later in the video. The CPU is the quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU running up to 1.7 GHz in 32-bit mode. The CPU is the Mlogic S905X2, and it is configured with 32-bit ABIs. The display is powered by the ARM Mali G31 processor, with a refresh rate of 60 Hz and OpenGLES version 3.2 which is really good for gaming. Under Network, it shows that the box has Dual Band 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android Information, it shows that the box is running on Android 9 operating system, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under Thermal Information, it shows that the box is running between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius under normal operation, and we will monitor to see how high it increases during treaty gaming. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos, and I will test its Dolby and DTS audio features in a moment. And that's it for system and hardware information, and let's see how it does in the benchmark segment and where it fits on the rankings chart. First, I show the results of the RAM copy speed and the internal storage read and write speed. The results showed that the box has a RAM copy speed of 3430 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 142 megabytes per second and a write speed of 83. This is a good score, and it scored a little higher than the other models. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results are still the same for these models, where on my 60 megabytes package, the A95XF2 has maximum download speed only on the 5 GHz band. The 2.4 band fell slightly below the maximum speed by 28%. And the LAN port fell even further by 39%. The LAN port here not as bad as the other models but still a poor performance on the LAN port. I now show the results of the Antutu benchmark, the score that I used to reference boxes on my chart. The A95XF2 got a score of 60703. And this is a very good score, similar to the other models, and we will see how it places on the chart. 
The CPU benchmark shows that the box got a Geekbench 4 score of 748 single core and 2128 multi core. Another good score by the A95XF2, and it's very close to the score of the Vankio model, but only higher by a single digit. The final score is the Ice Storm Extreme and the Slingshot GPU graphics benchmark. In this test the box got a score of 5507 in the Ice Storm Extreme and 526 in the Slingshot test. Again these results came really close to the Vankio model and it came out on top by mere single digits in the Slingshot test. It should perform well at playing Android games, but before I get to that let's see where it placed on my chart. So after updating the scores. The A95XF2 placed at position number 9 in reference to Antutu scores pushing the Vankyo X95 Max down to position 10 and taking a seat among the top 10 for now. And we will monitor the top 10 TV boxes as the year comes closer to an end. In this segment I will test its entertainment features, and I will start with Netflix. The version of Netflix pre-installed plays OK once you don't update it. If you do, it will not work. However if you install the version from a popular APK store, version 2.261 to be exact, it will work fine but in standard 480p quality due to insufficient DRM support. If you are a user of Amazon Prime Video the status is the same as in Netflix. Amazon Prime Video plays OK but in standard quality also due to insufficient DRM support. I will now cast my cell phone to the box via Miracast using the AirScreen app. I will now play some 4K video samples in Ultra HD HDR format at 60 frames per second.
executioners, judges. Welcome to the inside of your head. All the samples played really well with no issues whatsoever. I will now test for Dolby Audio, Dolby Atmos, THX, and DTS surround sound features. For this test I purchased a new Sony receiver with Dolby Atmos feature so that the concerns about whether TV boxes have Dolby Atmos or not will now be answered in my reviews. So this test shows that this box has Dolby Audio, Dolby Atmos, THX, and DTS surround sound audio output. I installed the three versions of YouTube and played some 4K video samples. The Android TV version and the YouTube Smart TV version played in 4K quality. The YouTube Vanced version played in 1080p quality at first, then when I tried enabling the 4K resolution in the settings area the app crashed continuously. My final demonstration is the Treaty Gaming and Gamepad Keymapping test. I installed the Octopus Gamepad Keymapper app and will play a combination of gamepad-enabled games, and games that require keymapping assistance. I will also be monitoring the temperature of the box during this segment. That's a turnover of possession here. Here's a chance to attack. It's got to be a goal, surely! Got to be. Perfect timing from the goalkeeper if he gets that. And it goes for goal. And that's a fantastic goal. Begin. yourself harder.
three, two, one, fight! The games played really well, the graphics was of a high quality on the Mali G31 as usual. Gamepad key mapping worked perfectly, and the box did not overheat. In summary, the original A95XF2 is a great TV box with most of the features needed for a great TV box experience. It has great features like the navigation bar and status bar, the root switch in the settings area, the ability to rearrange apps on the launcher, Dolby Vision, HDR Display, Dolby Atmos, DTS Audio Pass-Through, good 4K video playback, high benchmark scores, and high-quality 3D gaming with key mapping capability. To identify some cons with this box, the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi ban and the LAN port has low bandwidth speeds. Screen rotation does not work and Netflix and Amazon Prime plays in standard quality. So this brings to an end my review. If you would like to purchase this box or need more information, see the link in the description area directly below this video where you can get it at the lowest price online. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video give it the thumbs up. If you know someone who have been looking for this TV box well share it with them, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell, to be notified of my next video release, and see you in the next one.